Citrep. The rhubarb crumble was awesome once I'd got some custard, and as we've discussed previously, you can't have crumble without custard, it's just wrong. Now, today I was going to take the rear hub eccentric adjuster apart and grease the bearings in it and check all that over, but I need a 41mm socket I don't currently own, so I shall be sourcing that in the next couple of days. So today instead, I'm going to take the forks out of it, check the headstock bearings, re-grease those, and I'm going to strip and rebuild the forks. Because Ducati used this quite attractive looking top yoke nut that you can't put a normal socket on, I've had to make this wonderful looking tool to undo it with. As you can see, it's uh, no expense spent, but if it works, that'll do. I've got the trusty engine jack on the go under the front of the engine this time. In preparation for when I was going to take the eccentric adjuster out the swinging arm, I've got the back of the bike under axle stands. So the bike's nice and solid. I've now loosened that uh, top nut off, but before I take the forks out of the yokes, I'm going to undo, I'm going to take the preload off, and I'm going to undo the big nuts. I'm going to put a bit of tape on them first so we don't mark the anodizing. I'm going to undo those, or at least crack them off first, so that I've got something to hold them with. We've now got Dave's patented hover bikes. Because I've got the forks on the bench, well, on the floor anyway, uh, the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice I've actually put the proper paddock stand back in the back of it. Turns out it is a little bit more stable on that after all. Next thing I'm going to do is take the yokes out of it, clean and grease the bearings in them. I've had a feel for, of them and they're nice and smooth so there's no need to change them. And then we can put that back together and then get started on the forks properly. Well, we can't say the head bearings weren't greased. There's a good reason they still felt nice and smooth. There is ample grease in those. So I'm still going to clean them up, put some fresh grease in, and then put that back together. Now that the headstock's all back together with new grease and bits in it, uh, it's on to doing forks. Now, the previous owner actually was very, very good and gave me a set of new fork seals with the bike. So we've now got a full complement of oil seals, dust seals and new bushes. Uh, K-Tech good quality stuff. Obviously it's all available from BNC Express as well, which is local to me. Um, the outers have got a little bit of tarnishing and bits on them, but they should clean up a little bit. And the chrome's in pretty good condition. There's a couple of really, really minor pit marks on them in places. Can't really see it. Um, but I'm just going to give them a light to run over with an oil stone and then they should be all right. At first glances, the oil I've poured out the fork might look horrible and black, but actually, in the actual light that I'm looking in, it's actually not that bad. And everything's come apart quite easily. So, I think it's fair to say, from everything we've seen so far, that this thing has generally been actually looked after really nicely. But fresh oil and fresh seals won't do it any harm. On these Ducati forks, the compression adjustment is on that screw up the middle of the uh, fork tube. There's also a hole drilled in the wheel spindle so you can get to it when the bike's all complete. Now, normally if you're doing just a seal change or an oil change, you don't have to take the damper rod out. But I'm going to take it out anyway. The Obsession Engineering basic instruction on how forks work. Now, obviously, the outside of the fork bit is relatively straightforward. You've got two bits of metal that slide in and out of each other with bushes and seals in them. Inside there you have springs and the relevant spacers so that everything's the right length. And obviously we all know what a spring does. Then the important bit for giving us any kind of ride quality is the damper assembly. Now these are a cartridge fork. So we call this the cartridge. And inside here is, on the end of this shaft, is a piston with shims on. A bit like the one we showed you in the uh, shock video. So, obviously, as you ride along and go over bumps or you brake or whatever, 
This goes up and down. The piston moves up and down within the cartridge, which is sealed with it like a piston ring, and it forces oil through a shim stack on both sides of the cartridge, just like in the uh, shock video. Now, the really interesting bit, how you adjust them, are these little bits. This is the compression adjuster, which on these Ducati forks bolts into the bottom of the fork. On a lot of stuff, the adjuster is sort of round the back of the fork, and all you've got is a like an oil way drilled into here to divert the oil through there. Now, what happens is, when you close the damping off, you're screwing this, you're screwing this uh, taper into a hole, and it blocks the hole off and forces all the oil through the shim stack. And then as you open this, wind it out with the screw on the back, if you can see that. And that affects how far into the hole the pin goes and how much oil can bypass without having to go through the shim stack, thus changing how much damping it has in that direction. Now that's the compression one. The rebound one is attached to the fork cap, which bolts to that and then bolts to the outer. And it's the same system. Your little screw at the top screws this shaft in and out, and it depends how far into the piston it goes. If it's locked off, all the oil has to go through the shim stacks, so you have more damping. If you wind it out, you open a bypass hole, and it allows the oil to go through the bypass hole more or less, so it alters how much damping you have. So that's the basics of it. Now, these cartridges are actually pinned together, not screwed together. So I'm not going to take them apart, because that's a task for a whole another day. The other interesting bit of adjustment, of course, is this preload adjuster. If I can stop it rolling around. Now, the preload adjuster has, sticking out of the other part of the cap, these little metal pins. Now, if I shake this, you can see the pin sliding out. And that's the same thing that happens if I screw this in, it pushes the pins out and they push on the top of the spacer which compresses the spring which preloads the spring. So that's the basics of preload, putting more tension on the spring. Rebound adjustment is this adjuster and it restricts how much oil is going through one side of the cartridge, uh, piston sorry, and that's your compression adjuster that stops, restricts the oil flow going on the compression stroke through the bypass. Basics. Easies. Ish. Oh, I've got the new bushes and seals all fitted now into the legs. The next job is to fill them up with fork oil, set the air gap and then refit the springs and the spacers. I've cleaned everything, I've checked the free length of the spring, everything's in spec. Normally, Ducati say put five and a half weight fork oil in them, but because this is going to be purely used on the road, it's never going to go near a racetrack, I'm going to put five weight in to, to give it a, a slightly easier time through the shim stacks and in, in, fact, in effect make the high speed damping a little bit softer. Quite a critical point when setting the forks back up when you're rebuilding them is getting this nut in the right place on the damper rod. Because when this bolts down, you want enough of the damper, rebound damper rod, so that it bottoms in the hole and you can take it back out of the hole enough. So if you have that too far up, you'll never get the needle to bottom. If you have that too far down the thread, it'll bottom and it will never come out enough and you won't have the right range of adjustment. So you've always got to be careful that you get this right. Easiest way i found of doing it is to wind it into a position where you think it's about right, then wind this all the way through its range of adjustment, see if it has enough clicks. If not, adjust this to suit. That's the first fork leg done. Cartridge bled up properly to get all the air out of it. Air gap set at 132 millimeters with the springs and the spacers out and I've set the dampers and the preload as per the instruction manual so that we're starting on sort of Ducati recommended settings. Now I just need to do the second one. 
That's the forks all refitted, everything torques up correctly. The calipers, while I had them off, I made sure all the all the pistons move and the pads actually look fairly new and there's evidence of copper slip around them, so that's a good sign that they've been maintained nicely. The discs I've measured and they are a bit worn. They're not on their service limit yet, but I might price up some new ones anyway. And then if I do that, I'll probably put new pads in it as well. I haven't reattached the mudguard because it's not supposed to have the white stripe up it and the paint finish is a bit a bit matte in places it's also been touched up so i might look at getting that repainted or replaced but so far today other than the fact i didn't have the tools to do the job i actually started doing i think it's gone fairly well join us again next time while we do some basic service work and probably start putting the world to rights <laughs>